Welcome to New Orleans, also known as the city that care forgot and the big easy. Now, while the pace of life in Louisiana might seem as languid as the mighty Mississippi, this is also where America goes to let its hair down and turn the volume up. Let me take you on a 48-hour tour of Louisiana's largest city. New Orleans is so easy to enjoy, with the miraculously preserved French Quarter, the graceful Garden District and the ever-present Mississippi. Then I'm heading beyond New Orleans, following America's longest river to Louisiana's loveliest plantation house. Other cities name their airports after politicians. New Orleans is named after the great jazz singer Louis Armstrong. If you're driving, well, Interstate 10, the freeway across the American South, runs right through New Orleans. The city's a hub for long-distance trains, and thanks to the Mississippi, you could also turn up on a cruise ship or a riverboat. The best way to get your bearings in New Orleans is to leave the city, to take the Canal Street Ferry across the mighty Mississippi to the town of Algiers. And from here, you can see why New Orleans is known as the Crescent City, because of the great curve in the river that it follows. You might imagine, well, that looks like just any other big American city. And to some extent, the Central Business District is pretty much standard issue. But the great secret in New Orleans is the area to the right, low rise. What's happened there? Well, that is the Vieux Car, the French Quarter, and the place you need to make your home. So you've had a long old journey to get to New Orleans. What you need is an oasis of calm. And that is exactly what the Soniat House Hotel provides. Built in 1830, it is a former trio of townhouses now turned in to the most beautiful boutique hotel. And for a pretty reasonable $250 a night, including tax but not breakfast, come and see what you get. This was a boutique hotel about a quarter of a century ago before the term had even been invented. And here's what you get for your money. Absolutely gorgeous. And it's received the Mr. and Mrs. Smith seal of approval. You know, those books for people who aren't necessarily called Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And this isn't even the best bit. Come and have a look at the balcony. The communal balcony is absolutely ideal for just sitting and watching the world go by or keeping an eye on the neighbours. There's some strange characters around here. If you've got dreams of a suite, come and have a look at the Soniet House Annex across the road. If you want to experience life as a sugar baron, a cotton magnate, or just a Creole king, this is your palace. For something more economical, just a block away, you'll find a former macaroni factory, Le Richelieu. In the 70s, Paul McCartney and his family stayed here. According to the owner, Mr. Frank, they were a lovely family. What you may find even more interesting on a hot New Orleans day is the pool. The place to begin a hike around New Orleans is where New Orleans began. Jackson Square, named after him. Very important figure in American history. But I don't think that New Orleans is about American history. I think this is a city that is part of the great Caribbean triumvirate. Havana in Cuba, Cartagena in Colombia, New Orleans in Louisiana extraordinary cities created from a whole range of cultures compressed beneath this warm sun. The city was named for Philippe d'Orléans, Duke of the city south of Paris, who became Regent of France three centuries ago. 
The original French settlers and the Spanish who followed them were deeply Catholic and so, like all good European colonists, they built plenty of churches, such as the Cathedral of St. Louis, King of France, the oldest Catholic cathedral in the United States. There's an even more venerable place of worship just down one of my favourite streets in New Orleans, Charters. Yes, I know it says Chart, but in New Orleans they do things differently. The oldest building in the Mississippi Valley, it's the Ursuline Convent, looks to me like the wing of a chateau from the Loire and it was put here to accommodate a consignment of a dozen nuns who came here to spread Christianity and good hope through the new French colony. Bikes are a fine way to get around the French Quarter too and I'm turning left into Toulouse. Walking through the French Quarter, you understand why its buildings and balconies have appeared in countless movies, most recently the final Twilight film. With perfectly preserved homes along shady, elegant streets, the Vieux Car is the star. Bourbon Street across here, which by this evening I think is going to be the busiest street in America. New Orleans has always been way ahead of the rest of the world in terms of acceptance of the gay community. Indeed, this is the very first gay bar in North America, opened half a century ago. And here on the corner of Bourbon Street and Dumaine is pretty much the centre of the gay community. How are you doing, sir? Nice to see you. Simon Calder, very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Rue Royale here with its own personal mascot. What's your name, sir? Uncle Louis. Uncle Louis. And it's a very sophisticated street, rather unlike Bourbon Street. Well worth walking up and down, but I'm getting hungry. See you later. How are you? Well, I began my hike by St. Louis Cathedral. I'm ending it on St. Louis Street at number 511 and a half my favourite place to have lunch. I love many things about Johnny's Po' Boys, not least the fact that its motto is even my failures are edible and the fact that it's been going since 1950 and it makes it, I think, the oldest family-run Po' Boy restaurant in the world. Is that correct, Mike? That's correct. Yes, it is, sir. So we do everything. We've got over 75 varieties of Po' Boys on our menu now. Everything from bacon, egg and cheese to shrimps to veal to pastrami. What makes it a po' boy different from any other sandwich in the world is the bread. It's called French bread. So you can only make this bread here in New Orleans. And a funny thing about it is, the recipe has to be tweaked every day according to the humidity and the temperature of the climate down here in the south. It's gotta be adjusted every day with the wheat and the yeast and the bread to make it rise and set. So I should now eat this splendid shrimp po' boy. I would highly recommend that. 150 years old and constantly busy, 24 hours a day. No, not me, the Café du Monde, where you are guaranteed to meet the world. Here is the place to come for a Café au lait, delicious, and a beignet. This is a donut that has been not so much drizzled with icing sugar as being in a veritable blizzard. Very low calorie. From one high energy New Orleans experience to another. <music> 40 days before Easter is Mardi Gras, Fat Tuesday. And in the frantic build up to Lent, there are dozens of parades involving hundreds of lavishly decorated floats. And this is where Mardi Gras is created from papier mache, paint, and plenty of ingenuity. In 1947, a young artist named Blaine Kern started painting some Mardi Gras floats. Today, he's established a massive warehouse on the edge of the Mississippi, which is both a working studio and a tourist attraction. His son, 
Brian Kern works here. Brian, tell us about the concept of crews. We're not really familiar with those. Well, it's, it's actually the uh, old English spelling, K-R-E-W-E, and there are about 60 crews in the New Orleans area that stage carnival parades over a 12-day period. So Mardi Gras is one day, but there's actually 12 days of parades that lead up to carnival. And there are about 150 organizations that stage carnival balls. So it's it, from January 6th, the beginning of carnival season, till, till Mardi Gras day. There are about, you know, parties every night and there are parades, uh, you know, 12 days out. I reckon that in terms of eating and drinking, the French Quarter of New Orleans is the most intense and exciting square mile in America. Better go and check. With a different location for each dish or drink. Starting with my usual at the Carousel Bar of the Hotel Monte Leone. And why is it called the Carousel Bar? Well, because you can do a few orbits in about the time that it takes you to drink one of these. In any city, it's a good idea to look for a full restaurant. In New Orleans, they go one degree further. You look for the restaurant with the longest queue. There's a number of places in the French Quarter which aren't perhaps as authentic as they might be. That's certainly not the case here at the Acme Oyster House, which has been here for over a century. And Michael Hollywood Broadway, who's just chucking my half dozen fresh iced oysters, has been serving them up here since 1982. slides down a treat, as does this. Is it a soup? Is it a stew? No, it's gumbo, which of course is a great Louisiana dish. Its name derives, they say, from the word gombo, which is a Bantu word from West Africa, meaning okra, used sometimes as a thickening agent. Mm. Oh, if I can just explain a little bit about where I am. This is the beautiful Palace Cafe. It wasn't always a cafe. In fact, it used to be a big musical instrument store. It's right on Canal Street, which is New Orleans's main street. And it also marks the western edge of the French Quarter. Everything beyond it is a bit modern. You may be wondering why I invited you here to the Bourbon House. Well, partly because I think it's the closest that New Orleans gets to a traditional Parisian brasserie with an American twist. Next, there's the chocolate pecan crunch, of course. But the main reason is, well, the clues in the name. You're right here on Bourbon Street. And with 75 American whiskies on the menu, there's bound to be a bourbon that will help to settle your nerves. If you can't find what you're looking for on Bourbon Street, it's probably time to go to bed. Morning. Today, I'm off to see the Witch Queen of New Orleans, just for a short spell. This might look like just another beautiful New Orleans courtyard, but in fact, here, is the voodoo spiritual temple and here is priestess miriam hi how you do <laughs> well i'm very well but i've never been to a voodoo oh. temple before well it's like going to another palace <laughs> another so palace we, yeah we can go in and okay Voodoo is the intoxicating essence of Africa, mixed with French and Spanish influences. A blend of life, death, and everything in between. So, oh. Oh. <laughs> Come on, just pass it through quickly. Right, okay. Yeah. Oh. Passing the god of light bar, the god of the flame, to open the way and clear all disappointment from our path. 
bring us prosperity and award us blessing over struggles, hardship, and sickness and disease that will be obeyed and will help continue strength and peace throughout the, the land. And as they say <laughs> in New Orleans, live and let die. Or maybe not. Ooh, <laughs> and then once we die, we live. <laughs> Some hours since our last eight. Here's something that the chef, Michael Sitchell, prepared earlier. What a feast. Yes. Tell me what's happening here. Yes, Simon, it is a feast. Welcome to Galatoire's. Um, it is what we do here traditionally at Galatoire's for over the last hundred years. I decided to give you a smorgasbord of our things, starting with the souffle potatoes. Uh, they're puffed. You see how beautiful they puff up over there? Uh, these are our oysters Rockefeller. Louisiana oysters are the best in the world. Um, we also have a shrimp remoulade. Also, it's shrimp season. And we have the best shrimp also in the world, I hate to say. And then this is our traditional trout amandine. Um, it was a deep fried trout with, uh, with roasted almonds and a manier sauce. That looks perfect. It's overwhelming, isn't it? Well, I may be sometime, but I'm looking forward to it very much. Bon appetit. Michael, thank you Great very much indeed. Great to see you. On Royal Street, there are more antique shops in this single block than there are in the whole of Nebraska. Who do you think you are? If you want to experiment with different identities, then New Orleans is the place to be, and in particular, Masquerade on St. Anne at Royal Street, the place with the most interesting staff in the city. And remember, if you want to get ahead, get a mask. New Orleans used to have a streetcar named Desire. Now it's got three, St. Charles, Canal, and this one, Riverfront. If you desire a streetcar, there should be one along in less than 20 minutes. In the 19th century, the really rich people didn't want to have anything to do with the French Quarter, so they moved actually to a separate city, Lafayette, only three or four miles west of the French Quarter. But here they could build their grand mansions and put their stamp on what's now known as the Garden District. Pretty in pink. The French Impressionist painter, Edouard Degas, actually lived here for a while. His uncle was a cotton plantation owner. The early settlers used to bury people in the European style, below ground. Unfortunately, when there was a flood, which there often was, the residents had an unappealing habit of popping up again. So eventually, the Spanish arrived and said, you have to have above ground burial. And this is the best neighborhood in town for those who are sadly no longer with us. End your 48 hours in New Orleans as you began on the Mississippi. This is the Natchez, a genuine Mississippi steamboat. And every evening at seven, she sets off on a voyage down Old Man River as the sun sets over New Orleans. I delve below decks to the engine room that powers the mighty paddle boat and keeps the Mississippi rhythms alive. A river cruise wouldn't be a proper New Orleans experience without a jazz band on hand, providing a perfect musical climax to a 48-hour stay in the city that just keeps on rolling. Morning. Got a Chevy. Drive it to the levee. In fact, any car will do, including my slightly dodgy Dodge. The levees, of course, are the massive earthworks that line the Mississippi. And I'm driving inland along the River Road, which runs along both sides of the Mississippi and reveals all sorts of surprises. Over the years, the levees have been gradually built up, and so when you're driving along the river road, you don't get to see too much of the Mississippi. But it's always there with you in spirit, and it's very much a working river, the artery of America.
over millennia, the Mississippi has meandered all over the place, leaving patches of water that are full of life. I veered a few miles off the river road along Highway 51 because I wanted to get back to the bayou. That's a Native American word meaning tranquil waters. You can drift serenely through the swamp. Just watch out for the occasional chomp. And if you feel like a bite, I know just the place for you. Frignier Landing, a restaurant constructed unbelievably from the remains of a 19th century tobacco barn from North Carolina and some pieces of recycled material from New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. This is also a place that reminds you of the power of nature in this part of Louisiana. This used to be Frenier Village until a hurricane came along and you can still see signs of the devastation caused by Hurricane Isaac in 2012. The name Oak Alley might conjure up a dodgy passageway off Bourbon Street in the French Quarter of New Orleans. The reality is rather different. Nobody knows who planted these 28 beautiful oak trees, but they were already here in the 1830s when the rich Creole sugar planter Jacques Telesfort Roman built for his wife Selina this desirable residence. This decorative feature, by the way, is a sugar kettle. This bell used to summon the slaves to start working in the fields. Today, it calls visitors to tours of the big house. <coughs> the house at Oak Alley went through a succession of owners until half a century ago, it was actually abandoned. It looked as though it might fall into ruin. Luckily, it was rescued for posterity and tourists. Welcome to Oak Alley. Thank you. Oak Alley Plantation is the quintessential antebellum property. Antebellum meaning it was built before the American Civil War. On a tour of the interior of this classic Greek revival mansion, decide if it could be your ideal home. You can extend your stay here and experience Oak Alley after all the day trippers have gone home by taking up the B&B &B option to stay in an old tenant farmhouse. Sweet home, Louisiana. Oak Alley is still a working sugar plantation, a reminder that such magnificence was built on the backs of slaves, living and working in the most oppressive circumstances. From Oak Alley Plantation, America's mightiest river extends north to Memphis, St. Louis and Minneapolis. But I'm gone with the wind, back to New Orleans, the city that defines joie de vivre. New Orleans is surely the most playful city in North America and a great survivor with a long and sometimes tragic history that extends deep into the state of Louisiana. I've had tremendous times both in the city and beyond and what will stay with me more than anything else is the big warm southern welcome I've been lucky enough to receive. I think it's the closest that New Orleans gets to a Parisian brasserie with an American twist. Next, your... Oh, it's my pudding. <laughs>